Gary Oak. Ash's first ever rival in a Pokemon anime was a prodigy Pokemon trainer, putting him leagues above everybody else and even the main character himself, Ash Ketchum. And when he could, he would belittle Ash for his insuperiority, which really rubbed me the wrong way growing up. I mean, come on! Our boy's trying his best! Give him a chance! I've always wondered though, was he really that good or was he just overhyped in the anime? Since, you know, he's the first main rival, so he has to be strong. Why don't we put him to the test and find out as we attempt the hardcore Nuzlocke in Pokemon Fire Red using only Gary Oak's anime team. Looking at his team, it made me think that maybe he has a point. A lot of his Pokemon are very diverse and will be helping us out with the challenges we'll be facing in the future. Especially these guys. Oh man, I can't wait to use them. But for those who don't know what a Nuzlocke is, I'll put them on the screen right now and I'll also put them in the description if you guys are interested. Before getting into the challenge, I would love to know, what is your favorite Pokemon from Gary Oak's anime team? For me, it's gonna have to be Umbreon because I love its design and its shiny form is really cool. Like, look at this. It's blue. And in my opinion, it gets pretty overshadowed by Sylveon. Heck, even Vaporeon gets more attention for obvious reasons. Man, some of y'all need help, seriously. But with all that being said, let's get right into the Nuzlocke. Slugma. I named myself Gary and our rival Ash, and we both started our journey in the humble Pallet Town. Very excited for the road ahead of us, I decided to capture my own first Pokemon using brute force. But of course not, Gramps had to ruin the fun and force us into a slab. This isn't too bad though, because we were able to get our very first Pokemon of the Nuzlocke. In the anime, it wasn't very clear which starter he chose, but with my advanced detective skills, going on Google, we were able to deduce that his very first Pokemon was Squirtle. Eh, I mean, it could be worse. It could have been Charmander. I name our little turtle boy Elphilin. And just like that, our nuzlocking journey officially begins. Carry me to the end, buddy. Not too long after, in Route 22, we caught a Spiro named Beanbon. He wasn't given much screen time in the anime, so here, why don't we show him some love? I'm sure he'll be able to kick names and take ass. And we're all out of names, buddy. <laughs> You're 10,000 light years from facing Brock. Bro? I'm about to end yours and Brock's career. Don't test me. Ye, ye, that's what I thought, boy. Well, EV training, we encountered this. What? Come on, dude. Dude, I swear on my left nut that this is a full odd shiny. Holy crap. Yeah, I'll be keeping this guy as my lucky charm. When we got to Brock? Yeah, no. Of course, it was easy work with Elphalan, as a couple of water guns were able to Oko both his rock types, winning us a battle and getting us a boulder badge. As lovable as you are in the anime, you're pretty damn weak. Not surprising coming from Ash's companions. See ya, loser! In Route 3, Elphalan evolves into War Turtle, something Ash had a hard time getting. <laughs> okay, at this point, he's living rent free in my head. <laughs> I should stop. And we also captured Nidoran Male, named Meta Knight. Thank God though, because I honestly preferred Needle King over Needle Queen. Whoa, 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 okay, wait, wait, wait. The reason for that is because I wanted an attacker more than a tank, okay? Relax. <laughs> its nature is pretty bad, but I think we can work around this with EB training. While doing that though, something insane happens. What the fuck? <laughs> I get another <laughs> one in 8,000. I, bruh, no way. Man, if only my odds were this good during a shiny challenge. Huh, that would be nice. We can also get another encounter in Mount Moon where we ran into Jiwadu. I eventually captured it after his stubborn ass refused to stay in the ball. I named it Bonkers because training it is gonna be a massive pain in the ass. While exploring, we picked up this handy dandy Moonstone, which I can use in Meta Knight. I'll need a few more though for future encounters. I bet you guys can't guess them though. <laughs> I think it's kinda crazy how we can get Needle King this early in the game. Further along Mount Moon, we have an opportunity to get one of two fossils. Here, I want you guys to predict what fossil I'll choose. The person who chooses correctly gets a prize. I'll give you guys about 5 seconds. Good luck! For those who guess the Helix fossil, congrats! This time, I'll give Borger now. Oh, it's from in and out so y'all better enjoy it. Just outside of Mount Moon, I finally gave the Moonstone to Meta Knight, evolving him into the king of Nidorans and officially making him the ace of our party. So bow down to your king or perish a harmful death. We made quick work of Ash. I mean, come on, you haven't evolved your Bulbasaur yet? 
What are you doing? While exploring Route 24 and 25, Bean Bond evolves into Firo, making him infinitely more stronger. Originally, I was a tiny bit scared of Misty, but now I believe that Bean Bond with Stab Secret Power can sweep her entire team. I know that in those past two routes, I can capture an Abra, which is a Pokemon that Gary has on his team. But truth to be told, I'm a little afraid that if I attempt to capture it now, it's gonna result in a failure. So I guess I'll just wait until I get a few more balls to attempt this. Anyways, we head to Bill's house and oh, this feels like a kink that I don't want to know about. Hey guys, did you guys know that in terms of male, human, and female Pokemon breeding? Hey, no, bad. Do not even. After that horrendous encounter, it's time for us to battle Misty, Ash's second companion. She starts off with Staryu as I send out Bean Bond. Thanks to a critical hit, secret power though, we were able to take it out in one hit. Holy shit! Nah, this ain't dream luck anymore. This is just Chucka Conroy luck. Are you kidding me? Stormy was a little threatening though because of her chances of confusing me, but thankfully she didn't get it and his secret power was able to paralyze her. Oh! Oh my god! The amount of luck I'm getting in this Nuzlocke is kind of insane! Another one was able to take it out, winning us a battle, and getting us a Cascade badge. Man, even Missy was a piece of cake! They really did Ash dirty. His companions are amateurs, what the heck? Oh well. Whee! On our way to the tenant search, we made a slight detour to the SSN, my favorite place to dumpster dive. Oh! Worth it! Gary was here. Ash is a loser. Wait till he gets a load of this. <laughs> Speaking of him, here we have another battle with Ash, which goes as expected. Bonkers easily took out Pidgeotto with a critical rock throw. And being butt hurt, Ash sends out Ivysaur. That's illegal because you never above your Bulbasaur, but okay. For that, I swap into Bean Bond. It hit me with a pretty weak Vine Whip, and after a few picks, it goes down easily. Next is Raticate. Knowing it can't hit Bonkers too much, I swap into him. I use a few magnitudes in the SSN. I literally just killed everyone on the ship. Oh no. His cadaver is kinda scary, but it's physically weak so Beatman easily took it out. God, you really are an amateur. After rubbing this old man's back? What? Why don't you have a seat right over there? I obtained the HM for cut, allowing us to get into the Vermilion City gym. That's cool, we got in. But here, we ended up struggling with this trash puzzle. God, I always hated this puzzle. It's actually the worst. But we made it to the Lieutenant Surge, so let's take out our anger on him, shall we? There is only really one Pokemon we can use to absolutely destroy this guy. After getting hit with a Sonic Boom, I use a Magnitude 10 to crush it. Magnitude 10, <laughs> yes. You're fucking dead. <laughs> the same fate happens to Pikachu, and surprise, surprise, the stupid yellow rat is a weak Pokemon. Huh. Who would have thought? He then sends out his ace, Raichu. Of course, he tried using the double team strats, like a total scumbag, but that didn't really matter because one magnitude was able to take it out, winning us a battle and getting us a thunder badge. Wow, we just swept him like that, huh? Gary was so good, he was able to beat a lieutenant. <laughs> That's canon now, by the way. Right after the gym, Bonkers evolved into Graveler. The Pokemon is pretty weak because of the amount of damn grass types in this region, but we'll make do with what we have. Before heading to Lavender Town, though, I decided to test my luck in capturing the Abra. Oh no. So, I head over to Route 24, and with my fingers crossed, You got it? Oh. We captured the Abra. This was really risky, but luckily it paid off. A brave nature. Are you fucking kidding me? Well, I guess we can't get too lucky, right? I'll name you Kerbo. And after a bit of EB training, Kerbo bobs into Kadabra. We soon head into Rock Tunnel, which is the worst tunnel in this region. Like, I can't see anything. How can I traverse through this? Oh no, what a nightmare. Uh, sorry. I eventually got out, and past Lavender Town, we can get a new encounter. Growlithe! She'll actually be really useful for the next j- No! Roar! No, it's using Roar! Thankfully, we have another chance in Route 7. This guy's a little furious. He just wouldn't stay in the ball! Either way, we eventually captured it, but fuck. You guys can see how relieved I felt. Holy f***ing shit, you're an asshole. I named it a Woofy, and uh, I swear I'm not a furry. Or am I? <laughs> 
Since Celadon City is right next to us, I head to the department store to invest in a Firestone. Now, I can evolve a Wolfie into the Almighty Arcanine, or Arcanine, or whatever. <laughs> Which is the perfect Pokemon for the next gym? There is one more encounter we can get before heading into Erika's gym, that being an Eevee that I stole from this Black Bell. You ain't gonna do anything about this? Not even punch me? Aight, <laughs> okay then. Its name is Magalore, and believe it or not, we're gonna be using this guy because of the Pokemon Universal Randomizer, which made it possible for us to evolve this guy into an Umbreon. From what I know, you can't officially get that Pokemon in this game, so that's pretty cool. Um, but Modest, that's not what I wanted, I'm on this nature on, are you kidding me, bro? Our team is basically just built to destroy Erika, so we wreak havoc and committed arson so we can face Erika. Seriously though, a Wolfie just swept her entire team by just spamming Ember, winning us the battle, and getting us a rainbow badge. I might have overprepared for this gym, but hey, that's better than losing a lifelong companion, right? With 4 gym badges obtained, I know, pretty cool. I decided to relax in the casino for a bit, where every underage child hung out, right? Right? Was that just me? Just to see Team Rocket dicking around in the basement. So instead of getting the police, who are literally 10 minutes away to handle this, it is up to us, yes, a 10 year old guy, to do it instead. What could possibly go wrong? Well, for starters, we almost lost a few Pokemon to Giovanni. But other than that, we beat Giovanni pretty convincingly. He was so shaken up by how good we are that he dropped his hope scope, which helps us in the uh oh spooky Pokemon towers. <laughs> Bruh. Well, we can pull every TikToker stream and disrespect the dead in the Pokemon Tower. While we're here, we see Ash grieving about the loss of his Raticate. Oh, that's so sad. But guess what? We don't care. <laughs> okay, okay, my bad. Sheesh. Kerbal made it really easy for us to get through the tower, and soon we reach the top. After getting the Pokemon flute from Mr. Fuji, the whole road is open up to us and it's ready for us to explore it. We can make it to Fuchsia City, which is pretty cool and all, but how will we beat Koga? I mean, he's pretty powerful, so I must be careful. Oh! Okay, yeah, that might work. Before any of that though, we can get another encounter in the Safari Zone. And surprisingly, our first Gary encounter was a Cypher. I tried capturing it though, and... Okay, throw one rock. Then hopefully, he ran away. God <sighs> Well... At least we can get Surf. Wanting to make an even bigger impact to the gym, Kerbo evolves into Alakazam. Okay, this might be a little bit overkill. Oh yeah, and Elphilin also evolved. He might be overshadowed by my other Pokemon, but he'll be getting some spotlight soon. And with the HM for Surf, we can guarantee that happening soon. But for now, let's head to Saffron City to deal with Team Rocket. All by ourselves. Oh come on, have we forgotten that I'm a 10 year old kid? Seriously. How inconfident is the police force here? Well, we reach the top and I'll save you for later. Because you ain't worth my time, buddy. <laughs> but for now, let's prepare for Koga. In that process, Bonkers evolve into Golem. I don't think we're prepared enough though. I feel like I should be doing something, but I just can't put my finger on it. Gamble. 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 Come on. Gamble. Gamble. Gamble, please. Okay, okay, fine. Just one game though. Out of all the games I've played, I've won zero of them. So you know what? Fuck it. I'm gonna cheat in money. Sorry, sue me. With all these monies, I got a bunch of TMs. Now finally, we can face Koga. Finally, about time. What took you so- Shut up, dude. You don't want to know what I've been through. Very irritated about my losing streak in gambling, I may have accidentally- uh, swept his entire team with Kerbo using Psychic. I'm not cringe. I got. I'm just good. Did you see that? I'm just. I'm just. I'm just. Bay. I'm. I'm so good. I'm. It's time for Goblin mode. I'm gobbling out right now. You, Koga. Winning us a battle and getting us a soul badge. Ah, uh, sorry Koga, my anger was a little undeserved there. If you guys made it this far, please subscribe. It'll greatly help me out and it'll encourage me to make even more videos in the future. But with that being said, let's get back into the video. Before going to Silph Coast to complete our remaining battles there, we head to the Kanto Power Plant because here we can get our final encounter. That kinda underwhelming Waddle do. He could be useful though because those future Gyaradoses are pretty scary. So yeah, 
I'll keep it. Okay, so back to Sylph Co. We face Ash, and surprisingly, he's gotten pretty strong. Unfortunately for him, though, we're just so much better. He leads with Pidgeot, but Waterdew toasted it with a Thunder Punch. For some reason, he thinks it's a good idea to send out Gyarados, so another Thunder Punch was able to take it out. Ah, uh, same old Ash, I see. This time, he Guru Brain and sends out Growlithe, but for that, I send an Elphalan to counter it. It uses Takedown, but of course it didn't do much, and the Surf was able to drown it into Oblivion. Next is Venusaur, and and oh, wow, you actually got a starter to its final evolution. But I got an Awoofy. We committed Arson, and its last Pokemon is Alakazam. Knowing it only has psychic moves, I swap into Magalor, where he can't really hit me at all. With that, we were given free range to just attack. And after a few faint attacks, we're able to finally knock it out. <sighs> Still the same old dash. See you later, loser! Further down the building, we see Giovanni, which somehow is a lot easier this time than when we first fought him, which took me by surprise. Alphalan took out Needle Queen, Bonkers destroys his Kangaskhan, and Meta Knight absolutely annihilates Rhyhorn. Blast, you ruined my plans again. I mean, you really didn't make it that hard, so that's on you. Don't blame me for your failures. Anyways, with the day saved, we head over to take on Sabrina's gym. But with Magalore though, this should be a piece of cake. She starts off with Kadabra, as I of course lead with Magalore. Knowing it's pretty fragile, like my ego, I use a faint attack and a quick attack to easily take it out. As she sends out off, I switch into a Woofy. The fact that she has this Pokemon just shows how brain dead she is. If you want to use this Pokemon, be a bug type Jim. Think, Sabrina, think! A flamethrower took it out. She goes back to using psychic types, and she sent out ashes that I mean, Mr. Mime, Mr. Mime. Because it literally only knows psychic, I switched back into Magalore. All I needed to do was spam Fate Attack to take it out. Pretty easy. Last is her ace, Alakazam. But it's the same song and dance. They can't attack us, so spamming Fate Attack led us to victory. Winning us a battle, and getting us a Mars badge. Her spamming recover was pretty damn annoying though. Come on, man, just accept your fate. Now that we got six gym badges, we head to Cinnabar Island to face one of the easiest gym leaders in the Pokemon franchise. Maybe if this was another challenge, it might be hard, but unfortunately for him, we have a surfing water type on our team. Before that though, we had to explore this crack shack to get the keys for the gym. I really never understood this though. Why would it risk my life being in this rundown house just to get the keys for the gym? I'm pretty sure this is a safety hazard or something. Anyways, we challenged Blaine and his shiny bald head, and this could have been a challenge, but like I said before, we had one water type on our team, and I was pretty much able to sweep his entire team by just spamming Surf, making his head even shinier. Elphalan actually obliterated this fool, winning us a battle and getting us a volcano badge. No wonder Gary bullied Ash, he deserved it. Holy f I now have to head back to Vermilion City to face, surprise, Giovanni. I know, right? What a major plot twist. Who would have thought? But with what happened in the last gym, I'm pretty confident about my odds here. There's no way we're gonna lose this. Can you guys predict the 1 million IQ strategy I used to finally finish off Giovanni once and for all? Spam surf. Yeah. Really, it's not rocket science. I don't know what you guys expected. Elphalan was able to knock out Rhyhorn, Dog Trio, Needle Queen, Needle King, and his other Rhyhorn with just one surf, winning us a battle and getting us a pretty easy Earth badge. That was one of the easiest battles in this challenge. Man, and you call yourself a gym leader. With that, peace has finally returned to the Kanto region, and all we need to do now is go to the Victory Road so we can face the Elite Four and a champion. If we happen to beat them, we can prove that Gary is actually a prodigy trainer and that the ego he developed growing up is kinda well deserved. Before heading there though, Ash stops us to see if we're fit to face the Elite Four. Yeah, Ash stopped us. The nerf of this guy. But we entertained his idea and battled him. He leads with Pidgeot, which I didn't understand because compared to any other normal flying type, Pidgeot's probably the worst one out of all of them. So Waterdew was able to take him out with a Thunderbolt. Man, he should have just replaced it when he got the chance. Seriously. Anyways, Rhyhorn is next. But like its siblings, we surfed it into oblivion. You're not gonna avenge them. I'm not gonna let you. He then sends out his trusty starter, but I swap into my even trustier Awoofy, burning it to a crisp. His very scary Gyarados is next, so I swap into Waterdew to once again take it out with a Thunderbolt. Next is Scrawluff, but uh... 
Dude, what are you even doing at this point? And he sends out his last Pokemon, Alakazam. However, it's no match for Magalore. Literally has no moves to attack me with, so I had free range to just spam it with Faint Attack once again. Man, you gotta be better than that if you wanna be champion. Ain't no way. Well, that was easy. Even the victory road was pretty easy. I would say the puzzle should be harder since this is the final dungeon before the hardest battles of the game, but then I realized that this game is made for pubescent kids, so yeah, that's probably a bad idea. Either way, we made it to the Pokemon League, home of the LE4, and where the hardest part of the challenge is gonna take place. These guys are known for crushing anyone who aspires to be champion, so before heading in, we gotta make some preparation to guarantee our victory. For starters, I would EB train all my Pokemon in their respective stats. An example is Waterdo and Meta Knight. I would EB train them on Gastly's for special attack, since, you know, they're special attackers. Duh. I would also buy a crap ton of TMs and teach my Pokemon moves from move tutors all over Kanto so we can learn useful moves like Substitute just to make my victory even more convincing. Before heading in, this is the team we'll be taking to the very end of the challenge. The Electrifying Wadodu, our common collected Meta Knight, the Mysterious Magalore, our precious starter Elphalin, the overpowered Kerbo, and the good boy Wolfie. Anyways, with all our preparation, do you guys think we'll be able to complete this Nuzlocke? Comment down your prediction in the comment section down below, and let's head into Daily 4. The first member is very hot, or <laughs> I guess very cold. Lorelei. She leads with Dugong, and expecting this, I lead with Wado Do. This allowed me to Oko it with Thunderbolt. She then sends out Cloyster, which is what I wanted. Perfect. This big brain time. Knowing it will protect, I use a light screen since water type moves in this game are special, which is really weird. Gotta love the physical special split, huh? I would then switch into Kerbo and set up a substitute. This allowed me to set up three calm mines, increasing my special attack and defense. In turn, this allowed me to knock out Cloyster, Lapras, Slowbro, and even Jinx with just one psychic. Winning us a battle and making this a first member down. I am an absolute genius. Holy crap. Next is Bruno, the fighting type elite for member, but this was a complete freebie with Kerbo as he literally swept his entire team. I mean, this didn't take too much brain power like the first battle, but I'll take it. Winning us a battle and making this a second member down. Next is Agatha, the ghost type elite for member, but honestly, she should just be considered poison because her entire team is literally all poison types. Like, what is this? Seriously. With that in mind, we might be able to sweep her entire team with just Kerbo, like how we did with Bruno. For the most part, that was the case, knocking out Gengar, Golbat, and even Arbok. However, when she sent out her other Gengar, I wasn't too sure if I can outspeed this because keep in mind, Kerbo has a brave nature, so I decided to switch. Magalore seems to be a good choice here, so I swap into it. And the first sludge bomb she hits me with, I get poison. I t thanks game, love you too. After putting her in the red, I knew she was gonna heal, so it's safe for me to switch into a Wolfie. After two flamethrowers, we were able to take it out. What a pain in the ass. Last is Haunter, but of course one flamethrower easily took it out. So much easier. Winning as a battle and making this a third member, down. Now, it's time for the last Elite 4 member, the Dragon Master, Lance. He could easily end my run, so let's take this battle very seriously. Knowing he's gonna lead with Gyarados, I lead with Meta Knight. Dumb move, right? Nah. It's not because he knows Thunderbolt, which took it out in one hit. Checkmate. Aerodactyl is next. I guess he forgot the Thunderbolt I had literally one turn ago, because again, a Thunderbolt took it out. Oh my oh. God. <laughs> <laughs> How are you ever champion? Seriously. Tired of being embarrassed by a little kid, he sends out his ace, Dragonite. Unfortunately for him though, we have Ice Beam which knocks it out in one hit. Okay, can we just point and laugh at this guy because that is honestly pretty sad. All he has left are two Dragonairs, so two Ice Beam apiece were able to finish off this battle, winning us the battle and making this the final member, down. All we have left in the challenge is the champion of the Kanto region. Ash? Wait. How is that even possible? We've literally been like 3 steps ahead of you throughout the entire journey. There's no way that's possible. Nevertheless, let's beat him so we can finally become the Pokemon champion of the Kanto region. Like always, Ash sends out Pidgeot as a lead with Wadodu. And like always, one Thunderbolt took it out. You would think he would learn at this point. Huh. Seeing a kill with Earthquake, he sends out Rhydon. I go into Elphalin, and the Earthquake does a lot more than I expected. Yeah, nah, you're done. Nah. You're done. One Surf knocked it out. Next is Venusaur, but knowing it only has a Solar Beam, I stayed in so it can use an Ice Beam. It does a lot, but not quite enough to take it out. So I swap into a Wolfie to hit it with a Flamethrower, ending its starter's life. 
So much for champion material. Gyarados is next, and this time I gotta dodge a Hydro Pump crit. I switch into Water Dew, but instead he uses a Dragon Rage, which does absolutely nothing. Ash, you idiots! Allowing me to once again Oko it with Thunderbolt. He sent out Alakazam, but like always, Magalore was able to make quick work of it. A few faint attacks easily took it out. His IQ exceeds 5000, but it's still too dumb to let the same mistake happen three times. Ash, what are you doing to them? Now it's his last Pokemon, Arcanine. And it's fitting that we're gonna end this Nuzlocke with the very same Pokemon that started our journey. I sent an Elphil in, and with one Surf, we knocked out his last Pokemon and finally completed the Nuzlocke. We also became the champion of the Kanto region. Wow, okay. So, can I beat Pokemon Fire Red with only Gary's anime team? Using no items? Yes, yeah I can. And this challenge was super fun. Because of that, I'm planning on doing a series of doing Nuzlocke's of all of Ash's rivals. So if you guys are interested in that, be sure to stick around. I think I played this Nuzlocke very phenomenally. I don't think there's much I would change throughout the journey. I guess besides capturing the Growlithe, but that's about it. With that being said, if you guys have any suggestions on what team I should do next, please comment them down below. I would love to hear it. With that, thank you guys for watching me suffer, and I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.